Uh, hi, uh, my name is Gary Gall. I'm a professor and an extension specialist with Ohio State University South Centers in Piketon. Today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, one of our uh, research projects and more specifically a blueberry rootstock. Uh, what it is is, um, uh, well, uh, with blueberries and typically when you talk about blueberries and you got like rootstocks for blueberries. Uh, uh, that sounds kind of a little bit on the weird side and because why would anybody want to graft uh, blueberries? Well, there are several, uh, several reasons. Uh, one is uh, uh, blueberries require very acidic soil and uh, which is uh, not always available to farmers. And uh, another thing is uh, uh, blueberries uh, kind of grow more like, more like a taller, taller shrub. Um, so, so what if you turn a blueberry from a shrub into a tree. So that would be kind of in, uh, exciting. Uh, so just imagine that uh, uh, for homeowners, uh, if you can uh, plant a blueberry tree in your yard, and whether front yard or backyard, and you can harvest blueberries and, you know, from a small kind of a tiny blueberry tree, you know, whether that would be four, five, six feet tall. So that could be very interesting and very intriguing. So right now, uh, well, uh, we have a, a funded research project to work on, uh, work on a blueberry rootstock. Initially, I heard, heard about this from my counterpart in, with Oregon State, uh, University of Florida, and also University of uh, California. So, so what it is, uh, so one, uh, one potential uh, blueberry rootstock that we're looking at is called uh, Sparkleberry. Okay, the botanical name is Vaccinium arborium. Vaccinium would be uh, kind of somewhat related to blueberries. Uh, and then uh, arborium uh, means tree. Uh, arboretum, you heard of arboretums. Arborium uh, means tree. So, so this, uh, we grafted uh, our cultivated blueberry uh, into, uh, onto uh, a sparkleberry. Uh, so our uh, research uh, uh, research team members have gone to uh, Indiana, uh, Missouri, to collect uh, uh, wild, uh, you know, collect sparkleberry cuttings and plants uh, from uh, from the wild. So, so some of them, as you can imagine, it takes a long time for them to grow to be uh, to be uh, to be a good size uh, plant. So you can see here that they grafted uh, uh, grafted uh, blueberry cultivar onto this particular. Um, particular rootstock. So this will be kind of a long-term uh, long uh, uh, research project. Uh, behind me, uh, we have quite a few uh, selections and we'll have a few uh, close-ups uh, you know, afterwards. So a blueberry tree, and so what you could do is uh, you can have a small, uh, small trunk from, from the soil level to about the graft union, uh, depending on how you do it. And most folks uh, you can have somewhere between six to eight inches or about a foot. So you, once you do this and you can have a, you can have a blueberry bush and kind of all of a sudden coming, come from the base and, and then you have multiple, multiple branches uh, coming, coming from the trunk. And, and my counterpart uh, in, uh, uh, from other universities, uh, and they have tested uh, this particular concept uh, for quite a few years in a row. And they were able to grow uh, nice and tall, uh, or relatively tall blueberry trees. Uh, with their rootstock, and we wouldn't be able to uh, bring them right over to Ohio because they're not cold hardy. And uh, we have been looking for uh, cold hardy selections. Uh, we, that, this is why uh, we went to, uh, our folks uh, went to Missouri and went to Indiana. Uh, the literature did suggest uh, that there is a a small planting of uh, sparkleberries in Illinois. Uh, we have not been able to uh, uh, find it uh, yet. Uh, and uh, uh, there's no literature indicating that we have any in Ohio, but hopefully uh, what we have collected from Indiana and the Missouri uh, are gonna be hardy. And some of our, uh, uh, some of our uh, selections uh, have gone through uh, the polar vertex uh, uh, in uh, 2019. So. So far, they are, they are looking, uh, while well, they're still kind of small, but they, they survived. So based on our 
based on our observations, uh, it is possible that uh, sparkleberries uh, can be cold hardy in Ohio. It, it, also, it is also a little bit more tolerant uh, of acid soils. And, uh, uh, and where we collected the plants from, uh, they, were, uh, they were big, tall, well, they were, kind of, they were not necessarily like mighty oak trees, but they look quite tall, and I would say you know, 15 to 20 feet tall, uh, 15, 20 feet tall plants. Um, so we're really hoping, uh, uh, we're also very cautiously optimistic that the spark sparkleberry plants uh, will provide uh, uh, a good source uh, as a, a blueberry rootstock for our grafted blueberry tree project. And I always, um, since I'm, I've been with OSU for many, many years, uh, I would say since uh, I, have been, I have been working for Ohio State since 93, but prior to that, and I was a graduate student here. So I'm hoping that before I retire, we will have several uh, outstanding uh, blueberry rootstocks uh, named uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, for growers and, and also backyard gardeners in Ohio. So very excited and uh, hopefully hopefully in a few years and uh, we will have something extremely exciting for you and uh, my ultimate goal is to help uh, commercial growers uh, to grow uh, blueberry bushes and without uh, uh, without acidifying, acidifying the soil. Uh, my other ultimate goal was to to provide uh, a blueberry tree that uh, any homeowner can plant in the front yard or the backyard. If you have any more questions, uh, you're always uh, uh, you're always welcome to email me or or call me. Uh, we also have uh, uh, quite a few uh, quite a few fact sheets online, and we have uh, our extension bulletin, uh, the Midwest Home Fruit Production Guide. And so call me or email me, and uh, I would be more than happy to help you out. Uh, thank you very much.